All right, so good morning and welcome to Tailhook 17. As uh, Jockey said, I'm Tony Wilson, call sign Brick, Lockheed Martin test pilot for the F-35. I'd like to start off by saying thank you to the Tailhook Association for giving me the opportunity to speak to you this morning. More importantly, I'd like to say thank you for not scheduling it the morning after the bug roach mixer. That is a huge win for us. So let me start off by saying this has been a good year for the F-35C. The test sites have been pushing hard to complete the SDD requirements in preparation for operational test and IOC sometime next year. One of their big thrusts this year has been on WEPS uh, carriage and separation so that they can clear the way, again, in preparation for IOC. Now before I move on, I just want to take a moment to point out the you know, take a look at this picture. It's pretty bad. You know, I call it the bring it or go to war picture. What we have here is a full external uh, carriage of AIM-9Xs and GBU-32s across the board. And what you don't see is what we're carrying inside the bay. And those vapes are coming because we're breaking the sound barrier. We got a full weapons complement and we're still going uh, Mach 1 plus. So this video here shows the first separation from the F-35C ever. It's a GBU-12 coming from the internal weapons bay. Just like you'd expect it to, right? So in addition to level releases from the internal bay, we've gone on to expand the envelope to include level and dive releases, both from the weapons bay as well as the wing stations. We've cleared GBU-31 and 32, 31 internal only at this point, GBU 32 internal and external. The Pax River ITF is working on clearing the GBU 31 for external release as well. In addition to smart weapon or uh, uh, LGBs and JDAM, we also have the JSAO as well as the missionized gun pod. Air to air, we have the AIM-120 from the internal weapons bay only at this point, and the AIM-9X from stations 1 and 11, those outboard stations. Of note, another bad picture. The good news is the guy can employ AIM-9X uh, inverted or upright. So August of 2016, PAX ITF went out to the George Washington to execute the third sea trial the third and final sea trial of the SDD work. While we were out there, VFA 101 had the opportunity to come out and execute the first fleet CQ. During that evolution, they CQ'd 10 pilots and then wrote an after action report. And for those of you who've seen it, we all know that their assessment of catapult ride quality was, well, we'll just say less than stellar. As a result of that, Lockheed Martin, the JPO and NAVAIR put together a team to start working this challenge right away. And what I can tell you is, to date, we've made a lot of headway on this issue. The big thing that we've done, or one of the big things that we've done that I'll talk about, is we've reduced the release set point on the holdback bar. So what that does is, as the catapult is firing, and the launch bar and holdback bar start to compress the nose strut, it releases sooner and reduces that NZ oscillation or that initial bumpy ride. Now, I just had the, the opportunity and, frankly, the privilege of coming directly here from the USS Lincoln, where VFA 101 and 125 were conducting their next CQ evolution. And I'll come back to that one shortly, but I can tell you we are definitely on a good path. Twenty seventeen has also been a big year for the helmet. You know, everyone talks about the F thirty five B and the, the technical and engineering challenges that, that brings. I can tell you the HMD brings almost as many technical challenge. So we've seen a number of software and hardware improvements this year to increase both the stability and the accuracy of the helmet. One of those hardware implementations has been the inclusion of a third uh, tracker, an optical tracker. So now the system has three trackers to track 
pilot head position and orientation. It has a magnetic tracker, an inertial tracker, and now an optical tracker. And it works in conjunction to really fine tune wh where the pilot is looking and to give them the best symbology overlay that they can. In addition to this new tracker, VFA 101 and 125 have gotten the Dash 35 HDU, or the unit that sits on top of the shell. And what that brings with it is a low light or an improved low light capability to reduce green glow. Notice I said reduce green glow. It doesn't get rid of it. Now with that said, Lockheed Martin is working hand in hand with Rockwell Collins and Elbit to develop OLED technology, organic light emitting diode te technology. And what I can tell you is from what we've seen, OLED not only reduces green glow, but it completely does away with it. There will be no more green glow once OLED hits the street. In addition, once we've got OLED on the street, it opens the door for further on technological development to include, include better resolution and color helmet displays. So that's a little bit on the hardware side. For the software side, we've seen several improvements. One, uh, for PVI, or pilot vehicle interface, basic symbology displayed to the pilot, we have JPAL's improvement. We reduce the size of the JPAL's raw data queuing, so now it looks very much like ACLS does to the pilots, which makes the transition easier. In addition, the PVI that is shown down on the glass, they're able to run their TACAN course line through the JPAL symbology, but regardless of where that course line is, it always shows final bearing. So the pilot always has essay to final bearing, and it should do away with those burner one approaches that we see at night. We've also implemented HOTAS dimmability. So before, as the pilot was coming down the chute, uh, they were up on the panel, increasing or decreasing the brightness of the helmet. Now, it's tied to a switch on the throttle. They never have to take their hands off, greatly reducing pilot workload. The final, final software implementation that we've put in with respect to the HMD is what we call HOTAS declutter. What we found on previous ship trips is there's so much information presented to the pilot that it started to obscure the landing area. So pilot workload went up because as they were coming down the chute, they would slowly have to declutter or deselect each of their pieces of information. Uh, JPAL symbology, ICLS needles, flight directors, CDI. Now we have it all tied in to one simple switch. As the pilot's coming down, he or she can set up their system with whatever symbology they want. And then as they break out of the weather, IMC, or night, they start to break out the ship and the ball. It's a one switch actuation, removes all their unwanted symbology and leaves them with what we call the glide slope reference line and their ship's reference velocity vector. It's greatly reduced, the, again, the pilot workload. The pilots have enjoyed it so much that when 101 and 125 were out there, they were flying with it during the day as well. So great, great feedback on that. So enough about beeps, squeaks, and testing. Let's talk about training, flying, and killing. Earlier this year, VFA 125 was uh, stood up uh, at NAS Lemoore. So now we, uh, you can see here the, uh, the diamond formation. What I can tell you is Dash 4 did close it up. So a uh, real nice tight diamond as they came over. So we have tails on the east coast and west coast now, which is great. But what good are tails if we're not using them, right? What I can tell you is these tails are not just being used for training. They're not just sitting in Eglin and Lemoore. They're going out to Top Gun. Northern Edge, and playing in Red Flag, where we had a releasable 24 to 1 kill ratio. Now, that's all nice, uh, you know, well and good, but I think that this best summarizes it. We killed everything. Everything. Now, let me caveat that. We killed everything with 3i, which is a pre-IOC software. The jets just got 3F released to them 
uh, two weeks ago, which brings to it the IOC capabilities and enhances those capabilities greatly. So we're out there slaying with pre-production software, and the pilots are loving it. You know, what I'd like to say in closing is I had the opportunity and privilege of going out to the Lincoln uh, this week to watch VFA 101 and 125 conduct their joint CQ. And for me, having been leading the effort on the test side and going out there for the first three test events, it was really exciting to see the fleet taken over and leading the way. While we're out there, uh, we gathered uh, data regarding the NZ oscillation and the test guys were able to do some night evaluation of the Dash 35 with the new software. Now what I can say, or what I'd like to say is I'd like to tell you the test results, but I'm not going to because I'm not allowed. But what I can say is I'm really looking forward to reading the after action report from this event. I think we're going to have a lot of good feedback on this. So with that said, thanks for the time, and I'll entertain any questions. Yes, sir. There is no, that's just what we call it, the missionized gun. Uh, the difference is obviously the gun pod, which is on the B and the C model versus the internal gun on the A model, can be uploaded and downloaded. So it's just they'll missionize the aircraft for whatever the threat is. So the C model doesn't have an internal gun? C model does not have an internal gun. Yes, sir. Between all the variants, the commonality of parts and all that, is there a rough percent of parts and the capabilities of all those variants? I'll have to, if you swing by the, the booth a little bit later, I'll get you the exact number, but the commonality is somewhere between 80 and 85 percent. Yes, sir. Can you talk a little bit about air refueling, then? Air refueling. Yes, sir. So, just like every other new system out there, it has its challenges. And Sandy, what I can tell you is that Lockheed Martin and the Enterprise are meeting this challenge head on, just like every other challenge. So what they're referring to is right now we're having uh, aerial refueling with the B and the C probe and drogue challenges. We're taking a about a stern approach to this, a systems of systems evaluation, looking at everything from the refueling pot itself, hose dynamics, coupling, the strength of the probes on the jets, as well, in fly, as, well as flying dynamics or handling qualities. Now, again, this is a, uh, an area that we're, we're studying and evaluating, so I can't really talk too much in depth to what we're finding thus far, but I can tell you we're hitting this uh, challenge head on. All right, if there's no other questions, again, thank you for your time.